Hello, I'm here at Electronica 2024, and today I'm pleased to be joined by Matthias van Ditter, who is the Vice President for Gig Industrial at Molex. And today we are going to be talking about the current industrial market trends for distribution and the company's perspective for the coming months. So thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. And thanks, Paige, for the invite. Happy to be here. So my name is Matthijs van Witte and I'm Vice President for Molex Industrial, responsible for the sales activity, uh, sales and marketing. Um, you just mentioned GIG. GIG stands for Global Industry Group. It's a specialty team, if you will, uh, and, and we focus on industrial customers. Um, I'm, I've been with Molex now for a total of 10 years. Um, I've been my entire life working in the industry, uh, back, in, back in the days with Philips Research, and, uh, and again, ultimately moved to, to Molex. So thank you. Um, and perhaps for our listeners who aren't familiar with Molex, why don't you tell us a bit about the company as well? Sure. Uh, so Molex is, uh, is one of the top companies in the connectivity, right? So we are... Um, we are one of the market leaders in connectivity for the major segments. Uh, one of the leaders in automotive connectivity, medical, uh, consumer, data com, and of course, industrial. Um, we have uh, a very broad portfolio of products, which allows us to, uh, to cover many uh, applications within the industrial space, but, but well beyond, right? And I always like to talk about Molex as um, you know, a one Molex solution for industrial. So whereas we have a lot of what we call core industrial products, circular connectors, cord sets, heavy duty connectors, terminal blocks. Uh, we also have a lot of connector content that sits inside the box, right? So we are able to provide solutions to our customers, you know, in a very, very broad range. Fantastic. So you're the perfect person to, to talk to because I'd like to understand what the key trends are that are shaping the industrial automation market. Can you tell us? Yeah, sure. So I don't think the trends have um, changed uh, that much recently. Obviously, I mean, the industry went through a massive phase of disruption, right? We are just recovering from the corona, uh, the corona uh, 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 period that we went through. Still suffering with the consequences, frankly. So, if you talk, if, uh, frankly, I think one of the trends is, you know, is, is a very weak market that we experience today, uh, and uh, and that has a lot to do with the fact that post Corona there was a lot of panic buys, there was a lot of scarcity, there was a lot of demand, mm -hmm. and uh, the industry at large kind of lost eye on profitability, went in full fulfillment mode, at all costs, yes. and right now we're kind of getting out of that. So for us, 2024 is really a bridge year, if you will, into positioning ourselves strong for 2025. We believe that next year is going to be a much better year for the industry. Although we as Molex um, definitely managed to uh, achieve strong results this year. So if you go deeper on the industry trends, I mean, you know, everybody has been talking about Industry 4.0 for years, right? And ultimately, the question is, what does that mean? Um, for me, it's always meant, and I think you see it if you look at the big players in the industry, um, it, 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 it means to a large extent a decentralization of, of the control system within an industrial automation environment where decisions, flexibility uh, it, are, are more made on the local level. And that has a profound impact on the technology and the technology trends. And we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, certainly having a large impact on, you know, the needs for connectivity and definitely driving, you know, our technology roadmap. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of that, I'm interested to hear how Molex is adapting its strategies to meet some of these changing demands. Yeah. Well, let's let's. You know, maybe let's break it down because again, Molex has a very you know wide product portfolio. So maybe let's just first talk about connectivity. Um, connectivity uh, for Molex in the industrial uh, 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 segment means we have our broad circular portfolio, pretty much all the commodity coatings. Uh, but Molex being an American factory, uh, uh, a company, we also have. Um, unique form factors, unique to the North American market. 
Uh, we've has, uh, invested heavily in newer form factors, uh, circular for power, like the L code. Uh, so we, we kind of cover that full portfolio. What you now see, though, is that almost outside of the standardization or outside of the commodity standards that you see in the market, you see because of the decentralized controls, you see a much higher need for power and higher data rates deeper into the machine, deeper into the architecture. And that is starting to drive a new generation of circular connectivity uh, that uh, have uh, that hi have hybrid configurations. And Molex has always been in the game of hybrid configurations. We've been driving our own unique form factors. The Molex CHT is a perfect example of that. But right now you see that um, there's a further need for hybrid connectivity, right? So if you look at our, you know, our innovation and innovation roadmap, um, some of that has to do with that. And the beauty is we also have access to our own cable capability, right? Because on the one end you have your hybrid connector, but that hybrid connector connects to a hybrid cable. Uh, Molex acquired a company called Flamar, uh, you know, close to 10 years ago, in fact. And that's been really helping us to drive that unique capability and being at the forefront, right? So we don't rely on the supply chain to kind of, you know, give us, give us the capability that we need, but we can really drive that together with our customers. Another example, and again, staying with the connectivity topic, is that uh, we've, we've made a pivot on our service model. Uh, and we feel that in you know, today's market and the market recovering from that post-corona dip, we feel that uh, proximity to customers, more important than ever, uh, combined with very short uh, lead times. Uh, so we've created a, um, a service model that allows us to respond very, very rapidly, much more rapidly. I mean, we came from times where we had 30, 40 weeks of lead time. It's very normal. Right? And today, if you talk to a customer, four weeks lead time is already a challenge, right? And I think a lot of companies in this industry, companies that are in, you know, in, 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 in the same commodities as we are, they are struggling with, you know, with living up to that. Um, you have to realize Molex is a very strong company with a very broad scope, mm -hmm. right? So we have the skill, we have the ability to pivot, to work through challenging times and to come out stronger. And that's exactly what we're currently doing. We have pivoted on our manufacturing capabilities. We are able to respond to very short lead times. And I definitely would encourage any customer that has short lead time requests to contact Molex. And you know, we're very, you know, we're more than likely to uh, to you know to give a favorable response to that. Excellent. And one of the things I wanted to to, to bring up and, and talk about was that industrial automation systems have, have created, you know, what's called the smart factory. Yeah. Um, but customers who wish to, to embrace smart solutions face several challenges. So can you tell us what those are? Yeah. And that's actually a big one. I mean, we can probably talk for, you know, for hours on, on this topic. But uh, definitely, I was, I was talking about the broad portfolio that we have as Molex, right? And connectivity, that's where, you know, Molex and connectivity, that belongs together, right? That, that's what we are. At the same time, Molex is very well known in the market for, uh, for our industrial communication capability, uh, especially for our NIC cards business, our network interface card business. And network interface cards really allow complex machines to sit on the network. That's really what it does. And what you've seen in recent years is that we came from a strong regional play where you had dominant communication protocols you know, on a regional level. North America was controlled by Rockwell, Europe was controlled by Siemens, and Rockwell and Siemens don't talk to each other. And for many, many decades, that was fine, right? But now, with the emergence of IP-based protocols, what you actually see is that the complex machines, they need to accommodate more, you know, the region where they land, right? So, you know, the ability of the complex machine to speak you know, Rockwell language as well as Siemens language without having, you know, a massive pivot on the development point of view from that complex machine point of view has been very important, right? So, again, completely different um, capability that we, um, that we present here you know, compared to connectivity, but we are very deep in our, uh, in our capability to uh, drive solutions in the industrial communication space both from a network interface communication uh, a point of view, from a network interface card point of view, but also from a software development stack point of view. So we have ready to go 
software stacks that allow uh, manufacturers of complex machines to, if they wish so, to embed a software stack in their, in their firmware mm -hmm. to flexibly you know, adapt the communication capability within their machine to the ultimate network where they'll, they'll end up with. Fantastic. So you've mentioned it, it a little bit already, but how exactly does Molex help its customers address sort of the issues that, that you've discussed up to this yeah. point? Again, um, the capability, industrial communication capability is very complex. Uh, developing those software stacks, especially from an adapter point of view, uh, is a capability that we've been building over the last 30 years. It's not a commodity in the market at all. Uh, recently, uh, safety became more important, which is putting further requirements on the, on the software stack, but also network interface cards from a development point of view. And it's not just the development, but it's also the, uh, the approbation of the product. We in our development center have our own TUV certified test lab. So we can actually expedite testing that normally takes you know, a significant amount of the development time. We can expedite that, we can stay ahead of the curve. We are very deep in the industry committees to make sure that we stay close to the industry standards out there, that we have the round robin uh, tests uh, with, our, you know, with, with, with companies that develop you know, communication uh, uh, products in the market mm -hmm. so that we secure and guarantee the interoperability of our solutions. Again, this is not a commodity. This also may not be an element that Molex is, is most known for. Again, we're a connected company, but this has been a very strong niche that, um, you know, that we're very well known for within that niche. If you talk to robotic makers, they will recognize Molex as one of the key capability drivers in this space. Perhaps you can share um, an example of how you've successfully helped customers on their journey to, to Industry 4. Is there a case study you can share with us? Sure, absolutely. And, and we have a very exciting one to share, in fact, very recent. Um, again, to the, co the, to the uh, uh, connectivity capability, where it's all about quick turns and being close to the customer. Uh, again, the world is a global marketplace. Mm -hmm. And... Um, one of our customers, North American customer, building warehouse automation system for a very large American outlet, they had a um, commissioning, well, they had the, auto the automation challenge to build an automation solution for a large number of warehouses. Fully brand new, need to be commissioned. And they went to, so they did take care of the architecture, they did the design, but ultimately it's the machine builders that need to build the complex machines that go inside. And they don't rely on a single partner, but they actually relied on the number of partners to build those machines. And as it happens to be, some of them are in North America and others are in Europe. And I just told you about the regional differences, even in circular connectivity. So our ability to, to provide both American standard products as well as European standard products in both markets with manufacturing locations on the two continents, close to where the customer needs it, has been uh, contributing to the success of building the solution. And again, I think it's a great case study to show proximity to the market, proximity to the customers, but also they're yeah, having access to you know, this global you know, capability in, you know, that allows us to, uh, to design anywhere and produce anywhere. Yeah. yeah, definitely a great example. So thank you for sharing that with us. And as you've highlighted, you know, Molex offers an extensive portfolio of industrial solutions. Can you give us sort of a bit more of an overview? For yeah, absolutely. And, and again, it is a broad piano, I tell you that. <laughs> um, so if you look at the Molex core portfolio, um, it kind of starts, I guess, with what we call the bread circular connectivity portfolio. Again, circular connectors from you know any any commodity uh, that you know that you would expect from a company like Molex, from you know from M5 to M8 to M12, all the way to you know to the large form factors, bread power uh, uh, type of connectivity. Next to that, we have what we call the Molex HTC portfolio, the heavy duty connectivity portfolio. Uh, it's been a portfolio that's been doing really well for us. Um, a pretty, it's a little bit niche, uh, but within that niche, we're very strong. Um, we spoke, already spoke about Flamar, yep. Flamar cable. Again, a capability that we acquired at some point. 
and again has given us the ability to really kind of you know drive the technology and the specification forward. Um, we have uh, a large portfolio in terminal blocks, uh, both for PCB mount as well as within installations, uh, and certainly an area of innovation for us as a company. Uh, we have solderless terminals uh, in a very large portfolio, and we're actually one of the largest players in the world in solderless terminals. Uh, battery connectivity for electrification purposes. Um, uh, industrial communication we spoke about, again, you know, from a complexity point of view, a completely different portfolio. Yes, very niche, but within that niche, we are definitely one of the leaders. Uh, and then next to that, you know, we are, as Molex, we have more than 100,000 product families, right? So if you look inside the box, if you look inside the robot controller, inside the robot arm, inside, you know, anything, there is a ton of content that we as Molex have that starts with, you know, mini fit and micro fit, that is kind of, you know, what everybody knows Molex for, yeah. all the way to, you know, to, to the smallest connectivity that you can imagine, um, uh, flexible, um, flexible circuits, uh, all the way to bus bars and tactile switches and displays. Mm -hmm. We cover, you know, the full spectrum. So given all of that then, what would you say are the company's priorities for, for 2025, sort of when it comes to your industrial portfolio? So, within, I mean, definitely within the core industrial portfolio, the priority is very clear, right? I mean, we are right now, I think, at, at, at a pivot point in the industry where I think uh, demands are, are starting to re-emerge. Again, there's a couple of things that had to happen for that. Uh, there were a lot of, and there are, a lot of geopolitical tensions, uh, well, you know, We'll have to see how that, how that is going to play out, but I think the political landscape has not helped, right? Uh, I think a lot of that is now kind of said and done. Uh, now it's time to look forward. Um, I think we can now, you know, uh, uh, be more intentional in the actions that we drive, which is definitely going to help. Um, automotive, both in Europe and the US, is a major driving force in the uh, industrial demand. Uh, we both know what's going on right now, right? We saw that a lot of EV programs were delayed uh, in Europe. Uh, there's a lot of uh, anxiety in the market that I think we need to work through. But ultimately, I firmly believe that in 2025, we'll see an upward swing. And for us, it's all about making sure that from an operational point of view, that we are there to, you know, to, 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 to drive maximum benefits from that upswing. And ultimately, it's all about creating mutual benefit, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we are in this game to, to win, to gain market share, but that's only going to go through you know, driving an excellent customer experience, being close to the customer, and driving values to the customer. So for me, it's all about that, driving value to the customer. Yeah. Well, I think next year is certainly going to be a pivotal year for the industry, so interesting to see what happens. Absolutely. Um, finally then, why don't you tell us a little bit about your partnership with DigiKey um, sure. and how you see that benefiting your customers? Yeah. So we already spoke a couple of times about being close to the customer, um, uh, you know, ha having the ability to provide a high service offering to our customers. And I think DigiKey is well known to be, you know, to be world class in that respect, right? I mean, you guys provide products, uh, you know, to the customer on the customer's desk, you know, within, you know, very often 48 hours. Uh, and I think that's incredibly important. That's been a unique value that you guys have been driving. Uh, Molex and DigiKey have a very long relationship, uh, both in the electronic space as well as in the core industrial space. And for us, that ability to be close to the customer, to have a very quick turnaround in getting products in the hands of the customers uh, is, is, is a core value uh, where you know, we, we believe that you know, you're doing an excellent job. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Um, and thank you also for your insights. It's been great to learn more about Molex and your, your plans for next year. So thank you again and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.